All right, welcome to the Monster Sanctuary Tournament Circuit Finals of the Holiday Casual Draft Tournament. Uh, this final is going to be between Heron Crane and Dos Eki. I'm the Smuggling I'm Barrel. I'm going Jeff Watt. So, this is a best of five going into game one. Um, so, Heron is running a fairly interesting aquatic team focusing on bleed and buffs, while Dos managed to get one of the scariest team compositions in the game, Targo Caraglo Brutus, in draft. Um, and has been absolutely tearing up the team with this. So we see uh, the, the very standard start, Targo going for the big protect, Brutus setting up a power focus. Heron has one turn to cripple this team, or he's going to lose something. Yeah, not very good uh, damage on the first two monsters here, but... A lot of a combo and with, divas, uh... and the fireball does yeah. take it out. I was worried because the... Uh, the blood magic didn't proc on the initial hit, but that debuffs were enough, and that sets Dos Ickes back really, really far. He basically wasted his first turn. So, uh, the Crimson to Mimic is able to revenge the uh, revenge kill the Elder Jail, but the bleed enabled the Jackal to take Jail out through its spinning event. Now, Heron, yeah, he's think... gone. Yeah, losing. Uh... Losing Elder Gel is probably a bigger deal for Heron than losing Brutus is for Dose. Because Mimic is a very capable DPS, and Dracogram behind that is as well. Yeah, Heron seems to have uh, a lot of great support monsters on his team, but he's, uh, he looks like he's going to try and use his Ukon uh, as his damage dealer now that Gel is gone. Probably saving Auklet uh, to be able to revive him at the end. So we do see the Water Surge blocked by Targaret's Protect. Uh, Alright, looks like he's going to attack with Grummy. And Grummy's attack... You know, applies a few debuffs, but I don't see a lot of damage. Yeah, a lot of armor break getting spread around, at least. So, uh, Doss is uh, healing and shielding up the team, trying to remove some of those debuffs and get Mimic in a position where it can take something out. Uh, with... Protect from Thornish, it probably won't be able to take something out this turn. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Mimic with so many buffs, it will just cut right through that Thornish. That's very impressive. Thornish is an extremely tanky monster. Yeah, going through it in one hit with uh, just neutral damage is pretty impressive. Yeah, and we see uh, quite a few buffs on the Ukon, but it's out of mana. It doesn't have uh, the mana it needs to fire off its really powerful spells. And it looks like yeah, Heron is going that's to try an issue with the That was a, a lot nice of cleansing going on there. With four armor break stacks on that Mimic, Ukon is able to use a low level attack and still take it out. Doss has his final damage dealer, which is Draco Ground, and it has a really good matchup into this team. Every monster on Heron's team is weak to fire or wind. So we see the Whirlwind, can't be dodged, lots of crits, takes out the Auklet. Makes sense, don't leave Heron with double rebuff. Bruno going for the Gift of Life, uh, trying to set up a bunch of support, and he does get a lot of buffs and some debuffs, but that means he won't be able to use it for two more turns if he gets into uh, if he gets into a crisis. Goes for the Acid Rain, breaks the Protect, and ooh, looking a little iffy on that Water Search. Ooh, gets the crits he needs, takes out the Draco Grand. That's huge. Yeah, this is Heron's game supports. now, and yeah, Pasaki yeah. knows it. He's down to just three supports, and he. Game two, uh, we see the same leads from both players, but now Heron's going first, which is interesting. Das Ekis chose... Oh, never mind. Uh, das Ekis is going first. Ch uh, chose to go first, which makes sense if he was in Brutus. Uh, we once again see the same lead uh, trying to set up once again um, the Brutus... Uh, to deal extreme damage on the second turn, but four stacks of armor break coming in from that Grummy, and Elder Jail is once again going to be able to take out the Brutus before it attacks. And the Elder Jail doesn't even need a, a blood magic proc on that one. That's just a guaranteed knockout. Yeah, and 
We've seen this before. Uh, Dosekis is able to bring in his Mimic uh, and easily get the counter KO on Elder Jill. But because he used up his first turn on the Brutus that didn't do anything, now Karen has the initiative where he can make an, uh, he can make an next attack here, uh, even though they both have one monster down. Yeah, the amount of velocity that you lose by not getting an attack off with Brutus is huge. Yeah. So, once again, it looks like uh, Heron brings in his Thornish, sets up the Protect, and is going to use Ukon to set it combo to do a bit of damage with Grimmy. Or maybe not. All right, uses Grimmy this time. Uh, he's able to get reasonable number of hits onto that. He really wishes he could Aquabast the Power Glow. That would almost take it out, but unfortunately, Turgos protected some blood. A lot of misses. Not that much damage. So, uh, Dosaki's going for the Mega Protect. Targo wants to keep his frail but highly effective teammates alive as long as he can. Paraglow, gonna go for a Claws to break the Protect. Oh. And... Get the taunt anyway. Wow. Up taunt. And this time, Mimic does not have enough buffs to just take uh, to take Thornish out. So that was a major, major deal. Goes for the Protect, brings it back up. But Heron, once again, is going to need to try and find some amount of damage here. As Das's own, you know, Protect spamming defensive monster is calling him equal throws. Decent well, damage to damage use, damage but though. it doesn't look like a knockout. Ooh, the bleed is enough to take it out. So, uh, Das once again brings in his Draco Ground, but he's in a much worse position here because he has to, um, uh, he either has to attack with Terraglow or Draco Ground will have to in we or attack with Thornish. I'm not sure if it can take out the Thornish. Goes for it, does take it out, Draco Ground, big damage, gets uh, two buffs from Brawler and Sorcerer using a super effective hit. But um, his downside is that he's extremely frail. So, um, Aqua is going to break the Protect, Grummy is probably going to apply a bunch of armor break, and then Ukai can take it out here. Yeah, one of the things that gives Heron a nice matchup here is having access to so much cleanse. Because Dose really just wants to build up a ton of buffs. And when you can take those away every turn, it's uh, pretty huge. Absolutely. I almost wonder if Dose should switch off the Brutus strategy for Game 3 uh, and try to do something different, because uh, he's really not been making use of the Brutus or his first turn advantage, uh, where his Brutus is going to us, unfortunately. But this time, it seems like he's going to try and fight it out with Thanatos. He does have Shadow Graft and gets an absolutely ridiculous number of blind stacks onto this Grummy. So, Thanatos might be able to survive one turn here, especially since everything Ukon has. And I think you have to have to take out Caraglow first, because it's got I'm sure at least revive and maybe uh gift to life. Yeah. Oh and the bleed damage finishes off Da uh, finishes off Cargo, but Revive is in play, Caraglow is able to bring it back. Cargo goes for the protect once again and Thanatos can maybe take out this Grummy? Uh, chooses to heal instead. Yeah, you don't want to take out Grummy because then Heron has double revivers out with Aquoot and Druidoak. So both yeah, players are kind uh, of being forced to play around revive. Yeah, I also feel like both players are in a bit of strange position. Dawson really doesn't want to have his three support monsters in at once. And. Uh, uh, we do see Heron uh, able to make the better of it. Ukon takes out Karaglow and with no reverb, does it. And here, Dos gives Heron the first turn. Uh, and it, once again, is leading with the Brutus. 
Oh, that was a big slime shot there. Elder Gel might be able to take Brutus out first turn. Goes for Caraglow instead. Uh, and thankfully, not that many blood magic points, in addition to Caraglow's concealed, uh, able to keep it alive. So, what will Brutus do? Does go for the power focus. So, it's once again trying to set up for uh, its turn. But we've seen this before. In the past couple of games, uh, Heron's been able to take out Brutus with an ultimate into a fireball before that's happened. I don't see any reason why you don't here. Yeah, yeah pretty, there it is. pretty big combo numbers coming out from that Grummy. Yeah, you don't often see Slimageddon on Grummy, uh, usually Acid Hurricane is preferred, but I really like it in this matchup because Hera knows he needs to get rid of Brutus. And if you can get rid of Brutus, um, he has a huge advantage, so he takes the he takes the single target skill that can put as many demons as possible onto him. So, once yeah, again, Dossaki's going, going to bring in the Mimic. Cargo as well, the AoEs don't do as much. What's better for that reason as well? For sure. Wukong actually has some mana this time. Uh, but he is going to use it to build combo. And Grummy... Really nice cleanse, getting quite a few buffs off of that Mimic. And dealing reasonable damage to it. But Dosaki has a chance here to try to make something happen. Restore getting rid of a lot of the demons, but unfortunately doesn't hit that weakness debuff, which means that Mimic's damage will be a little bit less than he expects. Let's see what he does. Chooses not to attack, goes for the Mass no. Antidote, cleanse both of the armor break, but still not that weakness. And that gives Thornish the opportunity to just freely break and protect as well, because it doesn't have to set up its own. Yep. And then Ukon... Ooh, this is going to be borderline. Looks like Mimic barely survives. Uh, the fact that it uh, it's weak to magic, but Heron doesn't really have any good way of uh, dealing magic damage. Coming out here. Uh, Ukon takes the hit, and now it has enough power that it can take out the torch. But because of fish scales, uh, it probably put a big bleed stack on itself that is at risk of taking it out. The Oculet is going to uh, go for the healing Polar Winds. Normally we see damage dealing Oculet, but Heron needed another support, so he's going to run uh, support Oculet, it looks like. And Ukon does have Splutter, so when uh, when Mimic falls, those lead stats from Fish Scales are spread onto the rest of the team. Well, they should be able to pick up a knockout on Akloot here, I think. That's for Ukon. Does take it out. Okay. Um, so now, double revise is in play for Heron, but not a lot of damage. Uh, he's going to have to either take something out with Grimmy or rely on bleed out from Akloot. Yeah, having the, the Druid Oak and the Grummy also allows a ton of regen to stack up. Yeah. Uh, need big single hits to get through this team. And that does take down the target, but Thanatos is a really good buffer, able to apply important buffs to Draco Gren, empowered and improved assault. Restore gets rid of that weakness debuff, and Draco Gren might have a chance here to actually wipe the team. Goes for the fire breath. Uh, takes out Grummy and uh, and Druido, but not Uclid. So, with double revive, uh, Heron is able to bring his full team back, but they're all very low, and he only has one attack uh, able to actually do anything. So, we see the Acid Rain able to set the team back to five regeneration stacks, which would be great, except that he's probably going to lose both his team members again, especially with Infinity Six coming into play on this turn. 
The fatal yeah, cut so from Thanatos, proving that he's not just a support. Uh, so Dos going Grummy second lives. turned out to be pretty important in this game. Yeah, uh, Gummy lives, but he's not going to be able to beat three monsters here. <laughs> Takes out the Kyroglas, one act, last act of defiance, and falls to Thanatos. Game four. And once again, uh, Heron is up to the first. So it seems like both players think that they're in the lead, uh, that they're favored if Heron goes first, which is not what we usually see. Well, once again, Heron trying to target down that Brutus, seeing that it's the biggest threat, uh, and then uh, hits Caraglo, doesn't get any bleed this time. Caraglo healing up that Brutus, and we're almost certainly going to see a power focus. Oh, it goes for the heavy punch, but doesn't actually get the kill, which is uh, quite unfortunate. Usually with heavy punch, you can see the damage premium, and you'll know if it kills or not. So that was, I'm not really sure what was going on there. But I believe Dosakis is going to uh, lose his Brutus. It could be a crit Brutus, potentially, where you're just hoping to hit that crit. Yeah. Goes for the fireball, and... Uh, I'm not even sure if the blood magic proc, but it didn't matter. So now Mimic might have some sort of AoE, but uh, unless he switched tackle with Flurry of Blows, nope, just goes for tackle. Is able to take out the Elder Jet through the Phoenix if any need, but Rummy still remains. And he's going to bring in Thornish to protect it and let those three regeneration stacks slowly heal. This isn't a horrible position for either player, uh, a position they've been in many times before. But these next couple of turns are going to be shambling a lot. Uh, Grummy, once again, trying to debuff the mimic, doesn't actually get very much. Just the one poison you're guaranteed. Yeah, pretty low roll on that Grummy attack. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, gets more debuffs from attacking into Thornish. Uh, but does have two armor break stacks from attacking into Thornish, and that might be uh, that might be quite a danger to his mimic. Uh, we see uh, Heron isn't getting on targeting it down. Uses Auklet to break the protect. And Acid Rain uh, gets it up to four armor break stacks, which should be enough for Ukon to take it out. Yes, and that splatter from Ukon combined with the bleed out from Auklet. Uh, is going to put pressure on the rest of Dos Equis's monsters. Yeah, that gives the option to really focus on getting one knockout instead of using for AoE attacks and hoping for the best. And there goes Ukon. So again, Heron has a uh, double revive, but is going to struggle to find a damage dealer. Heron, considering what his first option should be, goes for the Life Wave, applies a whole bunch of regeneration and some debuffs, but not much else. Targo, uh, Oplet is going to break the Protect, and we do see Slime again, applying a ton of debuffs and cleansing every buff on Draco Grimm, but it didn't even do half. Yeah, the problem with using Grummy as your DPS here is that you don't really have anyone to build combo for him. Yeah. And Grummy isn't usually uh, that well equipped to be a DPS, especially if we've seen it apply so many different debuffs. I, I would be surprised if Heron is running uh, a bunch of debuff equipment on it, uh, which doesn't always give it the best damage. And <laughs> it also doesn't give it the best defense, and Draco Grand is able to take advantage of that and take it out easily. Now, now we can revive it, but that resets all of its buffs and its age stacks. Aaron frantically looking for uh, something he can do to change the game. Uh, now, Dust Ekis can't really cleanse these bleed stacks, so they're constantly doing damage, but uh, 
Heron can't really apply more. He doesn't have a monster that can actually inflict bleed other than Aquat's Ice Sphere Volley, but it's not a damage dealer. So... But, Dazaki is... Oh. Uh, must not have been able to get a kill there, guys, for a potion. Aaron's still trying to take down this Draco Grand. If he can take that down, uh, fighting the Thanatos won't be as bad. And the target does die to the uh, to the dot damage. But that means that full offense is able to be used on Draco Grand. Can he get two kills here? He does, but they're not against the revive monster, so we're going to see everything come back. But I still think Dasakis is massively favored. Yeah, I would need a, a big proliferate chain from Grummy to pick up a knockout here. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, a reasonable pr bull prediction onto Thanatos, but uh, taking out Thanatos doesn't do that much. Uh, uh, Caribou can just revive it. So, opts to use the ultimate on Draco Grant, trying to cleanse some of its buffs, but two basically dedicated buffers, uh, Dazekis can buff Draco Grant faster than Aaron can cleanse it. And one final fire close uh, once again gets Heron to the point where he just has one army against the world, uh, and he's not going to be able to win this one. There we see Thanatos. Actually, I'm pretty sure this is the most attacks I've ever th seen a Thanatos make. So we're made it game five. Heron once again taking the first turn, and we've seen once again no changes for either player in terms of their teams. Uh, both seem pretty set with what monsters they want to run. Let's see if any of them swap up their strategy. Are seeing a switch up here. Acid Rain onto Caraglow. It looks like Karen is going to try and take that out, noticing how much of a threat it's been. But unfortunately, that concealed, giving it so much dodge on the first turn, uh, Elder Gel isn't able to connect enough hits to take it out. Yeah, I thought it might have been better to go for the undodgeable attack with the crab there. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, only level 3 Aqua Blast means Heron doesn't have it leveled. He wants Water Surge, which is usually better on Ukon. You want to get those Might uh, stats going on, even with Elder Gel, since it, uh, Elder Gel has Brains of Obron. But this is the one case where it would be really helpful. So Fireball does go on to Brutus, and again... We've seen Brutus five games, and we haven't actually seen it like, get a kill in any of them. But you know, Dasekis has been able to win despite that, which is very impressive. One, one more time, Mimic takes out the Elder Gel, which is very good. Elder Gel can spiral out of control very quickly. Yeah, we've seen a pretty consistent script in these games. Yep. And really, the way this uh, this matchup with Cornish versus Targo Paraglow Mimic, uh, the way this has turned out has determined all of these games. So we'll see how uh, both players are able to navigate around this matchup, having played it five times. Ukon once again being used to break the Protect. And Grummy is going to try and get as many debuffs as he can. Uh, gets a really good cleanse, uh, able to cleanse three buffs, but only the one poison. Paraglow once again being used to break the protect, and then a taunt. And with the one regeneration stack, the bleed is not enough to kill. Cornish stands for him. Heron looking through his potions. Uh, he doesn't really have a healer now, so he needs to use a potion if he wants to heal at that punch. Otherwise, he basically has to let him die. Does go for the potion, heals himself a little bit, but of course it's not as good as an actual healer. Yeah, I wonder if it might have been better to just break the, uh, the taunt there with Ornish, because it's going to go down next turn regardless. Yep. Seems to value it a little bit. And 
goes for the water surge with Ukon. Once again, we're seeing the crab almost out of mana, but the mimic almost dead. Thankfully, uh, Karaglo had its ultimate full heal, is able to uh, keep the mimic up, and we see Ukon dropped to a mimic's tackle. I don't, th I don't think we've seen this Mimic use any move other than Tackle. It's been working very well for him. Hasn't really stuck around long enough to use very many moves. Usually not. And we're seeing a fairly unique combination with Auklet, uh Thornish, and Grimmy. But this is, this is a bit interesting. Uh, the only real bleed application Heron has is from Fish Scales with Dos Equis is monsters hitting themselves, but with how hard, uh, how hard Mimic hits, that can actually be quite a bit of damage. Especially since Thornish uh, can take hits for its allies. So Mimic uh, choosing not to attack this turn, going for the Mass Antidote. And this is one of the interesting problems with trying to have your opponent kill themselves with damage reflect. Heron, uh, considering his options, but he is the one, uh, he has the one monster on the field with aging, so it's kind of to his benefit if things just stall out and no one can get the kill. Yeah. So, we do see it. Apparently, Dalsekis has Protect on his Mimic. I don't think that's come into play before, but not often you see Mimic taking a hit for Targo instead of the other way around. But neither player is able to really break through the other's uh, defense here, so we're just uh, we're trading poke attacks back and forth, trading utility attacks back and forth. Motions, uh, waiting for the game state to change, and that'll probably happen uh, next turn with the arrival of the first Infinity stack, which is probably going to be enough to uh, have Dos Equis uh, attack with his Mimic. Aquablast once again breaks the Protect, but uh, breaking this Protect over and over, Targoat has Revenge, which gives it a charge stack every time it's hit, and Leadership, so repeatedly attacking into Targoat without doing anything uh, will only make Mimic stronger all the time. And we do see the tackle, and that does take up the Auklet. Yeah, that 150 charge stacks on Targo really didn't translate to much damage. No, absolutely not. But, uh, thankfully, Doss has Mimic to deal the damage for him. And we see uh, an excellent DMF team assembled from Heron, where he can really apply a lot of debuffs quickly, but he he is once again eyeing up Grummy to do the damage for him. And I mean, it has seven H stacks in the Infinity stack, but looking at those damage previews, it's not really going to take things out. Oh, maybe I stand corrected. That was a, just a wow. very high, you know, high damage ultimate. Of course, now Mimic's going to probably hit harder. Yep. Alternatively, we have seen Thanatos attacking a reasonable amount in this game, so... We see the full heal from Keraglo, uh, getting more buffs up, and yeah, we see Thanatos using the Shadow Grass to break the Protect and the Taunt. Now, uh, Thornish is down, which is good, but Fish Scales has probably applied at least one really high power bleed stack onto Mimic. So, uh, unfortunately with Aqua gone, those will that probably only hit it once. But, uh, Grummy, taking revenge for the fact that I called it weak, is gonna one-shot Thanatos. All it takes is eight age stacks and two infinity stacks. If only it had an AoE attack. Yeah, that would be very helpful in this scenario. So, Dosaki's down to... <laughs> used to be that Heron was pressuring, trying to take out all of his damage dealers, but now he's, now he's down to two damage dealers, but has the very important support in Caraglow. Fire Claws does take out the Druid. 
Now, normally I would say that the 1v3 isn't possible, but with so much, so many agent charge stacks, uh, Rummy might be able to make something happen here. It goes for the acid rain, and it doesn't get that much. But the Mimic does die to the bleed. That's almost certainly the reflect damage from fish scales. Um, but we do see Draco Gren able to take out the Grummy and win Dos Equis the tournament. So okay. congratulations to Dos Equis and all the other participants. Well played by both players there. Yeah, this was this has been a very interesting tournament, probably my favorite so far. It was so uh, so great, first of all, to see a lot of monsters we don't commonly see. Like I think this is the first time I've seen Ukon, seen Draco Grand that often seen Caraglow. Uh, it's so cool to see these lesser used monsters uh, being put together and run in very strong teams. Yeah, it's uh it's great to see everything get a chance to shine, you know. Absolutely. And the the draft format is really interesting because uh, what with building building the team, building it on the fly. Um, I'm very excited to see uh, what what happens in future drafts. But until then, we will see you next time.